Hello, so today we are going to talk about how to set up Checkpoint VPN and Remote Desktop. This is a method for remoting into the work network from a computer that you've got off-site somewhere, typically at home, you know, work from home scenario. So there's two components to this, and one is the Checkpoint VPN, which is what actually facilitates the connection between your home network and the work network, and then Remote Desktop gets you into your actual work PC. So the things that you're going to need for this, you're going to need the Checkpoint software, the Checkpoint VPN software. That's a download that's going to be provided to you by your IT person. This is something that you'll install on the computer that you're remoting from. So for example, your home PC. And then the rest of the stuff that you're going to need is information. And this again will be provided by your IT person. You're going to need some server info, uh, which is going to consist of an IP address and possibly a port number on the end of it. Um, that'll be, that will be provided for you. You're going to have a username that's specifically for the VPN and a password that's specifically for the VPN. And then finally, you're going to need a remote desktop IP address. That is the IP address on your work network of your work PC. And then you need to know the username uh, for that work PC. And sometimes that username includes a some domain information along with the username. You're, again, your IT person is going to provide this, so however they provide it to you, that's how that needs to be put in. And then finally, your remote desktop password. That's basically, that's the same password that you use when you're accessing your PC at work. So we are going to walk through all the steps required to set this up. But this is the stuff that you need. The only download you need is this Checkpoint VPN software. The rest of it is information. So I am doing this setup from a Windows 10 desktop. Um, this will also work from other versions of Windows. If you have Windows 11, for example, that's not a problem. Um, this will still work on Windows 11. It, you know, some of the screens may look a little different, but the process is still essentially the same. So the first thing that you need is that VPN software, the Checkpoint VPN software. You would have been provided some kind of a link most likely to download this. So I'm just going to assume that it's in the downloads folder on this computer. And sure enough, uh, there it is. That's, I shouldn't really act surprised. I put this there. But you'll have something similar. Maybe you saved it to your desktop. Uh, maybe you saved it to your downloads folder. Or maybe you haven't downloaded it yet. If so, you need to download this. And it's typically going to have a name that looks like this uh, with a version number at the beginning. Yours may differ. And then checkpoint VPN. So we are going to run the installer file here. Depending on how your computer is set up, it may give you one of those little Windows prompts about, uh, you know, are you sure you want to allow this to make changes on your computer? Different computers have different settings there. If you do get that prompt, just say yes. And then we're going to walk through the wizard here. So we're going to start off. Let me minimize this down to make it a little easier to see. We're going to start off by clicking Next. Now, amongst the client products choices here, we're going to choose the default, which is Endpoint Security VPN. That's what we want. So we click Next. I'm going to accept, accept the uh, software license agreement. You can read down through there if you want, but it's boilerplate stuff. And we click Next. And then it's asking where to install the software to. The default location is almost always what you want to let it choose, what it's already done. And we click Install. So it typically only takes a couple minutes for the installation to happen. And meanwhile, you could go ahead and gather together the information uh, that I mentioned in the previous section of the video that you need to complete this setup. So much of that information is going to be asked for by the VPN software here. And then some of it's going to be for the remote desktop part of things. And now the installation is complete. So the software now exists on the computer, but it's not yet configured. That's what we're going to take care of next. So we're going to click Finish. And then let's go down here to what is called the system tray 
on the computer. That's where these, these small icons are down here near the clock. And if your computer is set up like mine, you have to use this up arrow here to show additional icons on the computer. The one we're looking for is this gold padlock. If you hover over it, it says checkpoint endpoint security. What I'm going to do is I'm going to left click and drag that down here and release it. What that will do is that will mean that that, that icon is going to show up without me having to hunt up here for it. The reason is, is we're going to need that when we connect the VPN software on a fairly regular basis. So we're going to right click on this gold padlock and we're going to choose connect. And the first time we're launching it here, this is the normal message to receive, which is there's no site configured. Would you like to configure a new site? What that's referring to is by site, it means a information about where you want to connect to. We haven't provided that information yet, so we're going to do so now. We're going to click yes. And now there's a wizard to walk us through this, and it's going to ask us for the information it needs here. So we click next. And now the first thing it's going to ask for is server address or name. And that's going to be the server information that I referenced earlier in the video that's provided by your IT person. Typically, it's going to be an IP address. Sometimes that IP address will be followed by a colon with another number, which is a port number. But either way, you want to key that in exactly as it was provided. I'm blurring it here because uh, <laughs> this is real information for a client, and I don't really want that uh, showing up. Now, what I like to do is also click Display Name. And what that will let me do here is get rid of uh, this you know, ugly server info and port number and type in something that's kind of a friendly reminder. So we're going to just put in my office. You could put in the name of your company there if you want to. It's really just a descriptive thing. And it's just a preference. It's not mandatory that you do this, but I like to do this. And now we click Next. So it's going to actually now try and reach out to your network and uh, talk to the checkpoint gateway device that's there and establish this connection in a you know just a basic way to make sure communication between your computer and that site is working properly now if you run into a problem here and this doesn't complete like we're seeing then contact your IT person and they can help you resolve that but if it is working you're gonna see something like this which looks like an error but it's not, or it's not one to be concerned about. It says the site's security certificate is not trusted. That's actually okay. And I won't go into a lengthy explanation of why, but basically there are ways of where you can register what's called an SSL certificate and embed it on the gateway and kind of lock it into your IP address and it kind of makes it official. But I would say, that a vast majority of small businesses don't bother with that. It's not really, it's not really necessary for the kind of usage that we're doing here. So we're just going to click trust and continue. And again, this is all only just part of the initial setup. You're not going to have to do this all the time. When it asks for authentication method, we're going to keep the default, which is username and password. And we click next. And there we go. The site is created successfully. So now the VPN software knows how to reach your work network. So when we click finish here, it's going to ask us, would you like to connect? Well, yeah, we're going to go ahead and do so right now just to test and make sure everything works properly. So if we click yes, now we see that the site that's selected here is the one that we labeled, my office. If I hadn't put that friendly label in, then you would see your IP address and, you know, that, that long number and whatnot. So here is where we're going to put in the VPN username and VPN password that you were assigned. Again, I'm blocking this out because this is a real person's stuff, but you would just type in what your assigned VPN username and password is. And then you click Connect. 
and it's going to give like a little progress bar here. And if this completes without error, it will say connection succeeded. And sometimes even makes like a little noise, almost like a, I don't know, it's, it, it's, it's a hard noise to describe. But down here, if we notice our golden padlock down here again, now notice that it has a green dot on it. And every once in a while, you'll see some little squiggly line go by, um, like an EKG or something that, that basically is showing signs of life. And if you hover over it, it says checkpoint endpoint security connected to whatever description you put in, client is compliant. So at this point, while this is active like this, your computer is now connected to the work network. But you'll notice it doesn't really look any different. You're still looking at your home desktop. There's this connection there that you can reach machines over there, but that's about it. So now what we need to do is we need to set up the remote desktop connection so you can get into your work PC. Now, the remote desktop software is actually built into Windows 10 and Windows 11 and previous versions of Windows as well. So if we go down here to the Start menu and click Start, and we just start typing in the search field, remote, uh, if we can type that correctly, remote desktop, and you see that right here, remote desktop connection, that's what we're looking for. So we're gonna click on that. Okay, so this is the remote desktop connection interface and the only field that it has here is computer and then some other text here we're going to click on this down arrow for show options it's going to give us a little bit bigger window with some more information there okay so where it says enter the name of the remote computer you're most likely not entering a name here you're actually going to be putting in the remote desktop ip address that we referenced earlier in the video so you're going to type that address in. It's possible that you will have been given some kind of a port number on this as well. Most of the time not, but if it, however it was provided to you, that information, you'll key that in here where it says computer. That's basically telling your computer where to find that computer across the VPN connection. Username, you type that in ex is exactly as provided as well, and that may include a domain name in front of it, or it may just be your plain username. However it was provided, you just type that in. Okay. And then you've got this option here for allow me to save credentials, and what that means is once we actually complete this connection, it's going to ask you for the password for your work PC. And what you can do is you could have the remote desktop connection remember that once you've keyed it in. Now, there's pros and cons to that. And most of the time, I encourage people to not tick this box. And here's why. Is there a possibility that any other human being might sit down and use your work PC or your home PC, excuse me? And if so, it's probably not a great idea to make it to where they can connect into your work computer without having to enter the password each time. So even though that's a convenience for you to not have to enter it in, it also means nobody else on your computer that happens to sit down there would have to enter it as well. That's not a good security situation, so it's best to leave this unchecked, okay? Now, before we actually connect to test to make sure that's working, we want to save this because the, not all these settings are going to automatically be saved for us. So we're going to choose Save As in this connection settings area right here. And then we're going to choose the desktop. And you may have to scroll through the list of choices here to find your desktop but find desktop and then put in some kind of a descriptive name i'm just going to say my work pc that's going to be the name of that and if we click save you'll see over here now on the desktop you see this my work pc now we can easily use that to launch the remote desktop connection in fact i'll go ahead and close this so now we've got our VPN running, 
and we want to remote into our work PC. So I'm going to double click that. This is a this should be a one time only warning. Hey, you know, it's just a standard Windows warning. We can tell Windows, don't ask me again about this for this computer. And it won't bother us like that in the future. So we click connect. All right, now this is a good sign. So we have now connected or started the connection process to the remote desktop and it's asking us for a password. That's generally a good sign. That means the VPN is working and guess what? I can see the computer you're trying to connect to and I just need to know what password to type in to get in there. That's a good sign. So we're gonna go ahead and connect now and we're gonna do that by putting in the password for our work PC. Now again, here's another option to remember. We're not going to choose that for the reasons that I described earlier. We're just going to click OK. The first time you connect remotely, this is another warning that will come up and it's just basically confirming, hey, are you sure about this? Yes, we are. Don't ask again and click yes. And there we go. There we have our remote desktop. So this is, uh, now we are connected to our work PC. And we can interact with that computer, you know, pretty much just like we do at work. So when we want to close uh, our connection, we can actually just click the little close button right up here in the uh, top right of this little blue bar. And what that'll do is that'll just disconnect us from the computer it even warns us as such, but the, the programs, you know, whatever you left open on the work PC will stay open, which is typically what you want. You just want to disconnect from home, but still keep stuff open on the work computer. So the only other thing that you want to do is when you are done remoting in to the office, if you were to right click on this gold padlock and choose disconnect, that's a good idea just to not have that connection to work open. And once it's not connected anymore, it won't show the green dot down here. So that is the process for installing, configuring, and using the VPN and remote desktop to your work office. The one thing to keep in mind, this is the most common thing that will come up, is the VPN, that's that gold padlock that we fiddled with, that must be connected before the remote desktop part will work. If you try to launch the remote desktop and the VPN is not connected, it's going to give you an error. It's not going to be able to find your computer because you're not actually connected to the work network. So make sure the VPN, the gold padlock, is active with its little green dot before you try using the remote desktop and you'll be fine. If you have any other questions, be sure to direct those to your IT person and have a great day.